Hello, we are Javier Corton, an Indigo Valley John, experience of first medicine, and we are here to talk about these issues caused by prions to, in order to show the, re the results of our cellular biology query. Why did we decide to talk about prions? The answer lies in the fact that they are very rare pathological agents. Even after centuries, since they were first discovered, the scientist community is still confused about the role in those diseases supposedly caused by them. Thinking that our pro that proteins can cause so little makes us even fear our own biological machine. Another reason of our interest in this, in this topic is the chaos that diseases caused by prions have made in our society, society in the last couple of decades. So, let's talk about prions. An abnormal isoform of the prion protein, PRPHC, is the only known component of the prion. PRP is encoded by a gene on the short arm of the chromosome 20 in humans. What we know for sure is that they appear on cells of the neurological system afflicted by spongiform encephalopathies. However, we have no evidence of their true involvement on the pathology. Following this, we are going to focus on the structure and functions of prions. PRPSC differs physically from the normal cellular isoform PRPC by its high BC content, insolubility in detergents, propensity to aggregate and resistant to proteolysis. From an atomic basis, both of PRPSC and PRPC are the same. However, biological studies have shown their structural differences. Since infectious prions are composed largely, if not entirely, of PRPSC, this alpha helix to BC the structure transition appears to be the fundamental event in the propagation of prions as well as the pathogenesis of the neurodegeneration. The mechanism by which prions multiply is unknown. The multiplication of prions infectivity is an exponential process in which the post-translational conversion of PRPC, the normal cellular form, to PRP to PRPSC appears necessary. Uh, according to the prion dimer hypothesis, a PRPSC molecule combines with one PRPC molecule, giving rise to one heterodimer. This heterodimer is subsequently transformed into one PRPSC homodimer, which later dissociates to combine with two PRPC molecules, creating an exponential process that we can see in the picture. The subsequent accumulation of PRPSC, which cannot be degraded, degraded, causes metabolism alterations making the cell inefficient and causing its death. The prion protein, which accumulates and finally kills the cell on the nervous system, is protein codified by the host and different from the infectious agent, the mutant PRPSC. The diseases are transmitted by an infectious kind of prion, which is usually called wild PRPSC. The gene that codifies the prion protein was sequenced in 1985-1986 and the human one was called PRNP. In humans, the gene is located in the short arm of chromosome 20. Depending on the species, two or three exons can be found as well as one promoter and two introns which separate the exons and the promoter of the codifying exon. That's what, that is what is representing on the picture. PRPC normal biological functions is still unknown. This protein is found almost everywhere, especially in cells related to brain activity as neocortex, thalamus, and every other tissue conformed by neurons. Even if we don't know PRPC functions on the healthy organism, it is sure that its presence is a must for the pathology to appear. Experiments have been made demonstrating that inhibition of PRP C is not the reason of the pathology, but the accumulation of PRPSC instead. As we said before, the spongiform encephalopathies is a pathology family caused by prions. Probably the three most lethal of these diseases in humans are Kuru, Krosko Jacob, and German strauss Skane syndrome. All of them incurable neurological disorders. Kuru, also known as the laughing sickness, 
was first discovered among the members of the four tribal tribe in Papua New Guinea. It was transmitted via cannibalism eating brain tissue. The first symptoms are balance loss, ataxia in all four limbs and head. After, after three months, the patient lacks present lack of coordination and memory loss. Three months later, impossibility to walk, use of incomprehensible language, dementia, and uncontrollable love. Not even a year after the first symptoms, the ill are dying at their bed in fetal position and not are able to respond to any stimuli. The most common of spongiform encephalopathies that affect humans is Creffel Jacob disease. The research on it was reactivated since the discovery of Kuru. After centuries of thinking, it was a unique disease of its kind. There are different ways of transmission, genetic, sporadic, or classic, and gastrogenic, which mean inoculation or eat infected tissue. The first symptoms are weight loss, sleep loss, and alimentary disorders. After a month, the patient develops lack of coordination, hallucinations, progressive memory loss, and confusion. These symptoms go worse. Less than a year after the first symptoms, the patient dies with hyperperspiration, sight loss, and total dumbness. German Strausler Schenker disease presents somehow a slight difference with the other two to major spongiform diseases. The main one is the spongiform transformation of the cerebellum of the head. It passes on through a genetic heritage. It doesn't cause attraction or death, just a decrease on, of the intelligent capabilities of the patient. Nowadays, there is a debate about if this three or another disease is supposedly caused by prions, as fatal familial insomnia, a rapidly completely independent disease, or different manifestation of the same one. Uh, at present, most of the disease related to prions have been wiped out as cool, of have a very little presence in human population, also in animal population. What's more, the most common ways of infections are reduced to genetic heritage transmission and sporadic transmission. This means that nowadays it's very rare to find a transmission of the disease among human population. So far, we think we have made a good exposition about the spongiform encephalopathies, but anyway, we have the must of tell the listener that there are more theories that try to explain spongiform encephalopathies without the concept of the prion. So as the conventional virus theory, the animal pyroid, or the virino theory. However, the prion theory still stays as the main explanation of the molecular machinery of spongiform encephalopathies. Thank you very much for watching this video.